Our thought today is last night during the Super Bowl, they charged seven million dollars for a 30 second slot. Who do they think they are, lawyers? So today we begin the, God, the letter of James, a wonderful epistle written by St. James. And just want to mention a few thoughts about the themes that we'll be hearing about in the letter of James. It's a wonderful epistle. It takes 20 minutes to read. It's 108 verses and 52 verses in the letter are advice and instructions on how to live the spiritual life, how to live the moral life as followers of Christ. It's a very practical book, only five chapters. Uh, St. James is writing to the Jewish converts to Christianity that are scattered throughout the Roman Empire. He calls them the, the, um, the 12 tribes that are dispersed throughout the world. And to get, he uses five chapters to reflect the five books of the, the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament. So that's very paralleling the first five books of scripture and the letter of James is very similar to the Sermon on the Mount, very practical advice. It's sometimes been called the New Testament book of Proverbs because of the, the very good advice that St. James gives. And there's a number of Jameses in the New Testament who is the author of this book. Well, most of the scholars I believe this is one of the relatives of Jesus, the son of one of the Marys who was at the foot of the cross. Sometimes he's called the son of Alphaeus. So James would be the one who, after St. Peter went to Rome, James stayed behind in Jerusalem and became the first bishop of Jerusalem and that he was really one of the pillars of the church in the city of Jerusalem. And we believe that James was martyred around the year 62 AD at the instigation of the high priest Annas II. So what are the main themes in this letter of James? We know that we, he probably wrote it about the year 60, just a few years before his death. Again, he's dress, addressing Jewish converts that are living the Christian faith. He gives them instructions as we heard this morning about the value of suffering, not to waste your suffering, but God allows sufferings to bring about our perfection and to bring about our growth and holiness and to become more like Jesus. He talks about the importance of faith and works, that faith without love is dead. And you can remember when St. Paul talks about works, he's referring to the works of the old law things such as circumcision and dietary laws and ceremonial hand washings. That's not what James is talking about. When James talks about works, he's talking about deeds of mercy, works of love, works of mercy, feeding the poor, taking care of widows and orphans. It's really living out our faith in love. Martin Luther, of course, with his you know, changing of Romans, of when it says that we're saved by faith, Martin Luther added faith alone. The scripture never says that we're saved by faith alone. That was added by Martin Luther. We are saved by faith, but not by faith alone. We're saved by God's grace that works in our life through our response of faith, hope, and love. And so St. James talks about that faith without works is truly dead. It's a very clear teaching of the, the importance of living out our faith in love. Then St. James also talks about our speech and how our speech should only be used to praise God and glorify God, not to gossip, not to lie, but the, the use of the tongue has to be for righteous purposes. It also talks about wealth and how to deal with money and how that we should not be attached, overly attached to the things of this world. St. James would talk about he who loves the world really does not love God. So there, there's a dichotomy between the two. So again, I encourage you to read this wonderful letter. Again, very practical suggestions on, for example, not judging others, avoiding backbiting, 
being detached from material things, being concerned for the needs of the poor, especially orphans and widows, the importance of prayer and remaining faithful to God. And one of the most interesting parts of James's letter is that it has the, the clearest description of the anointing of the sick in the New Testament. It's a very explicit mention of anointing of the sick, that if anyone is sick among you, let them send for the priests of the church, let the priests pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick person and the Lord will raise them up. If they have committed any sins, their sins will be forgiven them. So here we have all the elements of what we call the anointing of the sick, the use of oil, the prayer, liturgical prayer of blessing, having the priest be sent for him, the, to a person who is sick, and that the effects are often physical, but spiritual, the forgiveness of sins. So it is a wonderful letter, and you can see why Martin Luther didn't like it. He called it the epistle of straw. He said it should be burned, because obviously it's very Catholic, that it's very Catholic teaching. So he didn't like it, but of course it is the Word of God, the inspired Word of God. So maybe one of the suggestions during Lent is to uh, maybe just read a few verses every day, 108 verses, maybe read two verses a day during Lent and try to apply it to our daily life. So I'll give you a blessing with the relic of St. James, the author of this letter. Through the intercession of St. James, may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.